The war in Palestine is not only getting attention for the pure genocide that Israel is committing in Gaza. Issues such as mass manipulation, fear-mongering and government complicity in crimes against humanity are slowly being revealed to the public. However, there is also a deep-rooted question in all of this. Do we all believe in universal human rights? The genocide war in Gaza so far has taken the lives of over 9,000 Palestinians, 70% of which are women, children and infants. There are over 20,000 injured and over 1,800 missing under the rubble following Israeli strikes that were indiscriminate. The criminal Zionist regime has bombed Gaza with over 12,000 tons of bombs, equivalent to the nuclear bomb that the US landed on Hiroshima. 1.5 million out of the 2.3 million Palestinians in Gaza are displaced and Israel is still applying great pressure on Egypt to accept them and complete the first stage of the second Nakba to complete the ethnic cleansing campaign and get rid of all Palestinians. This is not based on my analysis, but on Israel's actions and its historical plans. The Zionist war crimes and acts of genocide are being committed only due to the support of the United States. If the US orders Israel to stop its massacre, it will do so immediately. This is because Israel relies fully on US military and diplomatic support. The US and Israel's allies are fully complicit in the Zionist crimes against Palestinians. Western governments gave Israel the green light to commit its heinous crimes by brainwashing people through mainstream media and whitewashing Israeli crimes, disregarding the catastrophic toll this has on the people of Gaza and disconnecting the Hamas attack from its historical context, primarily Israel's occupation, ethnic cleansing, apartheid and ongoing oppression of the indigenous Palestinians. The US support is pushing the region further into a greater escalation despite more multiple ceasefire calls and initiatives from regional and global countries. The Arab and Muslim world is raging against Israel, and although none of its leaders are taking strong enough actions to prevent the Israeli crimes, this may not be the case if Israel continues its atrocities. In the Middle East, there are no divisions over Palestine. The people of the region know the history very well. Many of their countries were subject to the same colonial occupation and brutality in the past two centuries. From a Middle Eastern perspective, the argument argument is not about who's right and who's wrong, it's about how to intervene and at which level to end the suffering of the Palestinian people. In fact, if the governments fulfilled what the public wants, Palestine would have been liberated a very, very long time ago. The more the US and the West support Israel in its heinous crimes against humanity, the closer they bring the region to an all-out collision where Israel's future would not be guaranteed at all. The absurdity when it comes to this is hard to conceive. The same countries that express outrage of the authorities' treatment of protests in Iran, for example, turn a blind eye to broad daylight massacres against the Palestinians. The same countries that lecture the Middle East, Russia and China on human rights are not concerned whatsoever about human rights when it comes to Israel. The same countries that support Ukraine with billions of dollars and even allow citizens to go and fight alongside Ukraine against what they describe as an occupation, brutality and crimes against humanity are taking the exact opposite stance when it comes to the Palestinians. They support their occupiers, their murderers, and their oppressors. Why are they doing that? Is it because they believe they have a moral high ground and that Israel is an extension of that moral high ground? And if so, what is that called? Do they not know that when they legitimize the atrocities of Israel against the Palestinians, that it might be them who one day will suffer from the same atrocities? And if this happens, what would they expect the world's response to be? Well, if the world would respond in the same manner that they're responding, it would tell them to stop resisting their oppressors and occupiers and let them get on with their job smoothly. It would also ask them to get rid of their government and label it as a terrorist, albeit democratic, for standing up against occupation. It would tell them that their government, that they chose, is not serving them, that a foreign occupying force knows what's best for them, no matter how long they have been living in that land and how short-lived that occupier's existence was. The world would tell them that they will lose houses, families and loved ones, hospitals, bakeries and markets, and call it collateral damage. The world would not raise an eyebrow if hundreds are killed in one hospital airstrike. They will use fabricated images 
to put the blame on them. You can have a press conference surrounded by dozens of bodies, but the world wouldn't show it. People don't need to see such images after all. The world would call capital punishment such as cutting off water, electricity, gas and communication on civilian population an act of self-defense instead of a war crime. After all, why should people have access to basic life necessities when they have a government that dares to say no to a wonderful occupation, let alone attack it? If 50,000 innocent civilians are killed by deliberate airstrikes, the world would also blame the people and their government. Because after all, they hide rockets in children's rooms. And because they do so, Children and infants, whether newborn, one, two, five, or six-year-olds, are legitimate targets. Never mind the images of the dead babies, whole families under the rubble, pregnant women dying, the world won't publish them because people don't need to see them. It would affect their mental health. The hospitals would be blamed for allowing cancer wards to be resistance hubs. If airstrikes land and demolish the whole hospital, the blame would land on the people and their government. Again, in fact, the world would show a made-up 3D video that the occupier's military produced to prove there are military command bases under the hospital's reception. And don't dare ask for sympathy from anyone, please. The world would go and visit your occupier, tell them that they have their backs, legitimize everything that they do and support them with all the weapons that they need to bomb the living daylight out of all of you. Because the occupier told them that you're subhuman and the world believed them. After a while, the world might ask the occupier to pause, a humanitarian pause, but not for the reasons you're thinking of. Because after all, pilots get tired after dropping 12,000 tons worth of bombs on people and they need a break. But the war can continue for as long as needs be, so that the occupation and its settlers can enjoy security and prosperity, so that their settlers can continue to steal lands. After all, they believe that they're God's chosen people and that he gave them that land. So who are we to argue with that? I mean, people can deny the existence of God altogether. As a matter of fact, the occupier's main visionary was an atheist. So was its first state founder and even its current leader. But when it comes to God's promise, we must all believe it and never question it. Even if the religious people who follow the same religion as the occupier totally disagree because their holy book doesn't say so. That doesn't matter. And if you deny that fact and any other core fact, such as the occupier's right to self-defense, the occupier's right for comfort, the occupier's right for relaxation, or any other core facts not mentioned in this statement, the world will immediately label you with the worst type of labeling that has ever existed. Anti-sympathetic.